Everybody good? Thank you for being here and uh, spending some time uh, this morning with me. I really appreciate it. Um, have an announcement to make today. I uh, appreciate uh, you guys uh, allowing me to make this announcement through you. Um, she and I have, have made a decision that effective uh, June 30th of 2024, we're going to retire uh, from the Ohio State University. Um, had a great opportunity to work with a lot of people here. And I just want to thank the, the leadership of Ohio State. Uh, during my tenure, um, it, it provided me an unbelievable opportunity to, to lead this program. And so the last 19 years, of, or 18 years, and started my 19th has been phenomenal. Uh, the presidents and the board of trustees that I've worked for um, have just been tremendous and just great people, um, great opportunities they provided me. I've always believed that a, a leader seeks to be the right person at the right time in, in the life of an institution. And, um, I just believe that July 2024 is the right time to welcome in new leadership, uh, to build on what we've already achieved. Uh, making this announcement now affords me the opportunity to work with my colleagues um, in the President's Cabinet um, and hopefully uh, facilitate a transition for the next president once uh, she or he is appointed. But after a 39-year career in intercollegiate athletics and administration, she and I look forward to our next chapter and we plan to spend more consistent quality time with our children, our grandchildren, and our extended family. I also want to thank Buckeye Nation for its support. At Ohio State, uh, we are truly blessed to have the best fans in the land. I think we all know that and just fortunate to, to have them. Along with Buckeye Nation, I also want to thank the leadership of our business community. Um, I'm immensely grateful to the network of business leaders who have invested in me and invested in our success. I want to thank the members of the media. Um, I understand and I truly respect the job uh, that uh, you have to do, even though sometimes I don't always agree with what you say. At the end of the day, you guys are uh, a tremendous job and you know, a tough job and it's gotten tougher over the years so uh, thank you for, for everything that you do um, I also wish to thank the many donors uh, the great experiences that I've enjoyed and uh, special memories that were created and uh, their commitment and generosity to our vision uh, it's been phenomenal and I just want to thank them for their great support and, and all of uh, the generosity of Buckeye Nation I also want to thank the coaches and support staff uh, with whom I've been blessed to work. I've been fortunate to work with some of the best in the business and I'm aware that I stood on their shoulders and, and this last year I will stand on their shoulders and uh, they're the finest in the country and uh, every single day they come to work to, to try and ensure that our athletic department is the premier athletic department in the country and uh, I want to thank them for their great work. Lastly, and most importantly, it's been a pleasure every single day and an honor uh, to wake up and, and uh, come to work and, and try and create an environment for our student athletes to be successful. Uh, they're talented, they're gifted, uh, they're the best there is, and uh, it's just been my honor and my inspiration every single day to work for them. This past year, we witnessed unprecedented performances. Uh, our teams finished third at Director's Cup. 95% of our graduates uh, found jobs or, or go professional or go, go to graduate school. We hit our best APR score in the history of 993, so it was a phenomenal year for our student athletes. So it's unbelievable. Uh, so I'm extremely proud of uh, the individual team and, and team championships that have been won during my tenure, but I'm more proud of uh, our efforts to develop student athletes holistically, uh, personally, and, and uh, to become future leaders. And uh, so I'm really proud of them. Uh, senior Vice President, I also have a role, uh, along with my colleague Mike Papadakis, to lead business advancement. And um, business advancement continues uh, to do a, a great job on the concerts uh, in this community, and particularly with our uh, partnership with Nationwide Arena. 
uh, trademark and licensing program. It's, it's the number one program in the country. It's evolved in, in so many different ways. Uh, and we've optimized the use of all of our facilities uh, because of the business investment efforts. Uh, just really proud of them. But most importantly, lastly, I'm really uh, fortunate um, to have a wife who understands my world. Uh, we all understand that. I gotta have a partner that is uh, supportive. She's been supportive for a long time. And, uh, she's a great friend, great colleague. Uh, fortunately, she's been in the business, so she appreciates it. And, uh, uh, but she's been my emotional support through good times and, and bad times. So I don't know where the hell she is. She was here a minute ago. <laughs> Love you, baby. Thank you so much. Appreciate you, Sheila. Um, so I also want to thank my children and grandchildren because uh, they've uh, embraced, embraced uh, Buckeye Nation in a big way and taken advantage of the opportunities to party. So. Uh, really appreciate uh, their support uh, throughout this time. Um, this, uh, we have another year to chase a lot of opportunities and uh, we're going to chase them hard like we always do. Uh, so I'm here to answer your, any questions you have. And I know all of you thought that I was coming here to talk about realignment, so I'll answer those questions too. <laughs> so, uh, I'm really proud of Jerry. He did a phenomenal job of keeping this quiet uh, for a while because you know we, we, we had the shelter of that issue. And, uh, so thank you, Jerry, for your great work. I'm so proud to work with you every single day. So. We'll open it up the floor for questions. Uh, far right over here, Spencer Holbrook, Letterman Road. Can you cite your, your family and always been having different kids with, but with everything that's going on in college sports right now, why now to, to choose to step aside and, and bring somebody to work? Yeah, you know, it's a great question. I, you know, I, I've always embraced change. You know, this is when I'm 76 and I came here, what, 49 or 48, I forgot, you know. So um, we've seen a lot of change over that time. And so uh, those changes were not a part of this, this, this decision. You know, uh, everything that's happening, I've, some of it I've seen before. You know, realignment, um, I was blessed to be a part of the committee that went from the Big 8 to the Big 12. So realignment's not new to me. Uh, NIL's else new to me, uh, but, um, you know, the transfer portal is not new to me. Uh, you know, our Olympic sports have been dealing with that for years. And so, uh, you know, the changes in the industry is not what caused me to say I needed to step away. Um, I just have always felt, and you know, my mentors have always said, you will know when it's time. You'll know. And uh, this summer, she and I sat down, and, and she was asking me a million questions, and I just said, uh, it's time. You know, and I do believe that. What I've said is, uh, uh, there's the right time for certain leaders at right, the right time of an institution. And I uh, really believe with this presidential change, to be highly positive, whoever they hire gives her or him the opportunity to hire their leader and make a run and build on what uh, these coaches and staff and student athletes have already done. Well, uh, third row middle, Dan Hope, 11 Warriors. Gene, I mean, just when you kind of see, you know, all these changes that are coming, I guess, you know, when you look at, you know, who could take, fill your shoes and kind of leave the athletic department next, kind of what would be your advice to them, what do you think are maybe the biggest things that they're going to need to be prepared for as they ultimately take over the Ohio State Athletic Department? Well, hopefully, I mean, they're, they're going to hire someone skilled and, you know, with experience. So, um, you know, someone hopefully with a high IQ and EQ, you know, people, someone that understands the value of people. Uh, it's a huge characteristic. Uh, someone that holds true to their values of an integrity and respect and for others. and. Um, and, that, and excellence in, in every single, single thing you do. Um, but they're going to have to be patient. You know, in this ever-changing world uh, that we're dealing with, uh, you got to hit pause and don't overreact and, and just be patient and, and be curious and inquisitive and, um, you know, just ask a lot of questions. And, and then at some point, you know, you have to be authoritative and lead. And, uh, but you, you just can't overreact in this space, uh, it's just too crazy. And, uh, and then, you know, they, they need to keep uh, the trajectory uh, in, in, in what we do, this culture. We recruit talented and gifted young people with great character. 
great character. And that, that has meant so much to our ability to be successful in the classroom, in this community, uh, and, and on the, on the com competitive, uh, in the competitive arena. Um, character is critical. And, and so we've made a significant improvement in that space. You guys see it, you interview those kids every day. And uh, so that person, whoever it is, is going to have to embrace what we've done, uh, but also, you know, the, those characteristics that I mentioned earlier, hopefully they'll have. You had said a couple of years ago that you thought it would be a good idea for FBS football to split away from the NCAA with everything that's happening. Do you still think that's the case? I think there should be a new structure. I threw that out there just to be a bombshell. You know, some, there's some people in the industry that can, you know, throw things out there and, and uh, you know, take the heat. And uh, I'm one of those people. Uh, but, you know, we, we need to look at how we're structured differently. I don't know if that's the answer. Uh, we just need to keep evaluating how we should be structured. And uh, that relates to even to our schedule. I guess we integrate Oregon and Washington uh, now. We need to make sure that you know, uh, our, our Flex Protect Plus model is, is appropriate or should we change it? So, you know, I don't, I don't know if there, there's a, if that's the right structure, but somewhere along the line, we need to think differently about football. We really do. And, uh, and it's, uh, is so important, and uh, we just need to get different with uh, Second row middle, Nathan Baird, Cleveland.com. You mentioned uh, that, you know, obviously there is a middle president right now. So I guess, how are you envisioning this transition happening with that sort of leadership absence? Are you working with the university um, to integrate that person, and, 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 and how is that a success? Yeah, great question, Nathan. So, uh, our president's cabinet, which is all the vice presidents and, and senior vice presidents, uh, we meet every Tuesday. And we're working closely with our board of trustees uh, as we uh, manage the institution uh, in, in the absence of a president. And that's working well right now. Uh, at some point, we do need a leader. And, and so hopefully, uh, when that leader is, is hired and, and, and appointed, uh, I'll be able to connect with them right away. Uh, they won't be here right away. Uh, but hopefully, um, you know, I'm able to you know, do a Zoom or meet them in person somewhere and, and talk about our program and, and give that person some recommendations on the characteristics that they might consider as they look for replacement here. Uh, so, um, you know, and, and then, then from there, it's just all a matter of timing, you know, when that person's appointed, when they're here, and how they want to do it. If they want to appoint a search committee or a search firm, I, I just don't know. Um, but I'll defer to whatever they want to do. I guess just to clarify on that, like your this is the search for your successor, does it start now? Do you no. know? I, it will start, I'm sorry, Nathan. It will start when the new president's here. Um, you know, unless something happens and they're not here over the next years, um, then the trustees will conduct that. But I anticipate that there'll be a new president. And that's that person's hire. To ask on, on the expansion side of things. To go back to things you've said in the past. You, last July, you and President Johnson were using words like huge and significant to talk about the, the media rights deal that was coming. Mm -hmm. Then, after the media rights deal came, you expressed some skepticism about adding other teams. Mm -hmm. and, and Oregon and Washington were out there at the time mm -hmm. because it was going to dilute that media rights deal. So, do you have any even ballpark details about whether they're what kind of new revenue is coming in that makes this good or palatable or happy? Yeah, so uh, it was not diluted. To us, so the original dollar figures that we had prior to Oregon and Washington coming in stayed the same for the institutions that were already in. The Fox brought new money to the table for Oregon and for Washington that they provided. And I don't know the exact numbers; it's somewhere between thirty and thirty-five million. I don't, just don't know what the exact number is. So it wasn't diluted to us. So the, the long-term play is that hopefully. Um, when we go to negotiate the next deal, uh, there, that's a valuable, uh, there's valuable inventory. Uh, so year five or six, whenever, uh, assuming as Tony goes to negotiate a new deal, you, you have working in Washington in your portfolio. Well, third that, right. Does that answer your question? Excuse me, third row right, Rob Oller, Columbus Dispatch. Gene, what are you proudest of um, over your tenure here? I mean, yeah. as specific as you can be, and then on the flip side, what biggest challenge, toughest moment? Yeah, oh wow, wow, you're going deep on me, man. Um, you know, there's so many great moments. You know, I, you know, the, 
what's funny, uh, the, the national championship of football was, was special. Um, you know, the three national championships in volleyball, men's volleyball was special. The, the, uh, uh, the wrestling national championship was unreal. I think I was in North Carolina with women's basketball. I had to fly to St. Louis in order to catch that, you know, to, to see those young men perform. So they spent championships. And, and individual student athletes who uh, just been so impressive. Um, uh, Christina Manning in track was, I mean, she was just fun to watch. Uh, so it was just so, so many of those. But I, I'm most proud of uh, the fact that we've been able to create a culture where we develop the student athlete holistically. And that's, that's, that means so much to me, Rob. It really does. That it took us a little bit transition to that, uh, to make sure that when that student athlete leaves our little cocoon, uh, she, and, she or he is ready. They're ready for the next chapter in their life. And we didn't do that well when I first came. We didn't. And I have to compliment my teammates and everybody because um, they, they all embrace that vision of uh, making sure we challenge the student athlete early in their career, their freshman year, and sophomore year, to make them figure out what you know what path they might want to be on, and, uh, and put in place the program. So I'm most proud of that. Uh, our kids have great character; they're really good people, and that that that's that's cool to me. What about challenges? What what would you what, what you miss? Uh, 2011 was hell. You know, uh, you know, I uh, that was painful. You know, I, I uh, uh, the student athletes who were impacted um, uh, didn't deserve uh, the, the uh, penalties that they had to uh, uh, deal with. Uh, that was hard. Um, people were uh, affected negatively, and that was a hard time. And, and so, um, you know, helping Luke Fickle through that year was hard. Uh, that was really challenging. And, uh, I have to compliment him for his resiliency and his commitment and, and uh, you know, just the stick uh, to itness to try and keep our program afloat. Uh, so uh, that was a hard year, uh, dog years. Uh, and obviously, uh, COVID, we all had that. I mean, I shouldn't talk about that because that should be all in our rear view mirror, but because we all went through that. But you guys know that story. And, uh, so that was a hard year. Uh, Right next door, Tony Gerber, Buckeye Hub. You uh, mentioned uh, thinking differently about football. UCLA head coach Chip Kelly came out this week and said that the top, say, 64 programs, football programs in the nation should do what Notre Dame does and just be independent in football and in conferences and everything else. And basically just create one big football conference. Your thoughts on that, the viability of something like that? Uh, interesting thought. I haven't thought about that. But I don't have a whole lot of comments on that. I'm sure there's a lot of ideas out there. I haven't studied that, but it's an interesting idea with throwing the table. How difficult would that be to... For the uh, next people. Yeah. <laughs> How difficult would it, would, it, uh, would it be to herd all of those cats, TV-wise? You, know, you, know, you, you, you look at what's happening in the ACC and the grant of rights and things of that nature. And, you, know, you have those type of things, and even my idea that I threw out there, you got to think long haul. You know, those things, those ideas don't happen overnight. So you have to say to yourself that that's the future model. That's what we should work towards. And I don't, you know, I haven't looked at his idea. So, you know, there's building blocks to get to that. Um, so I, but, you know, at the end of the day, whatever model that is evolved, and, you know, from committee or whoever, it's not going to happen overnight. So. Would there need to be like a czar? Over I've game. always thought that there should be an individual that's responsible for college football. And it's kind of fits that, that model that, that Dan raised is that there ought to be an individual that wakes up every single day and has their job. And uh, rules, you know, all that stuff, it, it should be compressed into one unit. And, and uh, it's decentralized in different areas now. And, and uh, so, um, you know, it's, it's, it's too big, it's too important, and it's going to get bigger. So, anyway. Thank you. Front row right, Austin Ward. Rivals dot the I. You, you Rivals what? And dotting the I. Oh, okay. Holy oh, smoke, what a brand. <laughs> That's, right. That's right, I am a businessman. Um, Gene, 
you never said this publicly. Uh, I think if many of us, or some of us thought that maybe four or five years ago would have been that right time that you talked about mm -hmm. for retiring, and then you had the transition to, to Ryan Day, you had COVID. Did, do you think at all that the timeline for yourself shifted, you stayed longer because of everything that was going on around here and how Maybe she can answer that. That's correct. She's over there texting, so she didn't hear you. This is great. She didn't hear it, but you know, um, yeah, yeah, you get on it. You know, so every summer, to your point, right, you know, she and I, and I sit down and, and literally think about, okay, what are we gonna attack this year? We got our long-term goals, right? But at the end of the day, what are we gonna attack and accomplish this year? And so those years. Um, I just felt like um, new leadership couldn't handle those things. You know, I, I have historical knowledge, uh, I have experience, I need to help my teammates get through those times, uh, everything that you just listed. Uh, so, um, and, and it was the right, it was right for me to be here during those times. Uh, but where we are now, uh, you know, none of us can see around the corner, so, you know, I got like, what, 11 months, so, so there's something might be coming out there. But at the end of the day, I just feel comfortable that my, uh, this team. think institutional knowledge is important, but that I'm not making that higher, if that answers your question. You don't think you'll have any input on it? Oh, I don't know. It depends on the next person. They might not like it. <laughs> Second row middle, Doug Lane Maurice, the podcast. Um, Gene, when you think about all the changes that are going to be implemented now, you're saying the new person coming in hopefully won't have too many bumps. Do you think there are a lot of things ahead, though, just in terms of how an 18-team Big Ten is going to work and all the logistics of that? Mm -hmm. And again, you guys will be working on that mm -hmm. as they, because they're right, you're, you're timing this not coincidentally to mm -hmm. them joining the Big Ten and you're leaving yeah. around the same time next summer. Do you think there are going to be a lot of challenges just with the devil in the details of all of this that will the next person will face, or do you think it will all be smoothed out? No, it's, so, it's funny, it's a matter of how you look at things. I don't look at those as challenges. I look at those as opportunities. You know, the merging in USC and UCLA and Oregon and Washington, the 12 team playoff. I mean, those decisions were, were made uh, with good input and, and with good knowledge, and et cetera. So now that's the work is actually taking advantage of those decisions. Um, you know, I, I, I don't see those as challenges. That's the business, that's what you do. Uh, now, challenges are. Things that you know that happen around the corner that you don't see that's that's you know coming at you that you got to respond to, and that's where you got to hit pause, use your teammates, be smart. But those things that we're talking about, the changes in the industry, I don't see those as bumps. I really don't. Uh, the transfer portal is, has to be tweaked. You know, the days, the timing, all that stuff. But that's the business. It's always been the business. So. I don't see those as bumps, if that makes sense. Um, our culture's good, our people are good, uh, we're on a good trajectory with, with everything else, um, you know, academically, so uh, I think the, think the person's going to inherit something pretty special. When you think about the future of college sports that will no longer be your job to worry about, mm -hmm. but you'll still care, are you worried, are you optimistic? Like, what do you, what do you think when you're sitting back in retirement and watching, do you think you'll feel good or do you think you'll think, oh man, what's going on here? No, you know, it's funny. You know, you know, yeah, I probably will, um, after I finish <coughs> having my glass of water. Um, uh, but the reality is, I, you know, I, I, I know that college athletics is going to change more. It's changed a lot already. 
And I can't sit here, and I don't think any of us can sit here and say, I wish it was like when I played, or I wish it was like when I coached. Uh, that's unrealistic thought process. Uh, the ecosystem we serve today is totally different, totally different. Their experiences are significantly different. So you have to have this mindset that change is coming. And if you're in it for the right reasons, then you ultimately embrace that change and figure out how you adapt to it. If your goal is to be the best at what you do, then you embrace that change. You shift. One of the greatest books I ever read was John Maxwell's book, Leaders, Leaders Shift. And, and it talks about how leaders have to begin to shift because change is inevitable. We all deal with it. So it's just a matter of how you deal with it. So I, I don't think college athletics is ever gonna go in the tank. It's gonna be different. There's gonna be new legislation. There's gonna be a new structure here and there. The student athletes are gonna be different. But how do, you, how do you embrace that change? How do you make the best of it? It's the attitude you have to have, if that makes sense. Uh, third row right, uh, Cameron T. Robinson, The Athletic. Gene, how has your job evolved? I mean, you've been through a lot, a lot of change. How has your job evolved as you try to deal with the transfer portal and then also try to deal with realignment that seems to come up every, every couple of months? Yeah, that's, um, that, that's it. You know, it's kind of a little bit what I was talking to Doug about. You know, um, you, you, you have to, first and foremost, there's a lot of layers to that question. So, you know, if you're focused on being the best you want to be, then that means the team around you. The, the, you know, we have 523 employees in athletics and business advancement. You got to really pay attention to that culture and that environment. And we have a, a significant number of employees who are just starting in the industry. So, um, making sure that you create a culture uh, where they're being developed where they're growing, and so, because it starts right there. If you don't have good people, you can forget it all. So my, what's changed for me is recognizing that their experiences have changed, and me being sensitive to that, humanistic to that, and, and, and making sure I create an environment where they can be the best that they can be. That's really changed. Um, you know, back in the day, you, you know, you just worked and you didn't worry about people's feelings and things of that nature. But today, you bet. And so that's changed. Everything that, that, that we've talked about already seems to be on a faster track. Uh, nowhere in my experiences have we had the aggregate NIL, transfer portal, uh, leadership change at the NCAA, uh, realignment like is happening right now, the evolution of streaming versus linear, the aggregate of those things, and I didn't even mention some things, uh, have been different. And so having to really understand that and, and adjust to it has changed. And so it's no longer just fundraising and winning games, right? It's, it's all being able to lead a group of people uh, in the face of those changes. That's, that's changed over the years. Going through all of that and seeing how the staff you built behind you have grown, <coughs> grown and gained experience through all that. Is that you talked about you trust that this staff that the people you're leaving behind can deal with the changes. Does that give you more confidence knowing they've been oh, yeah. part of all that stuff? Yeah, yeah. There you go. Great question. And that's you know, I <clears throat> I've always wanted to leave a place better than I found it. But I also want to leave a place that when the next person comes in, gives them a chance to transition in as smooth as possible. And they now have that ability with this team. And it always wasn't that way. You know, we've been unstable a little bit. And, and uh, so now it's a situation where I feel they'll come in, they'll, they'll make changes, they'll, they will, based on their style, but they should be able to come in and take their time on the learning curve and allow the team to work, and then they ultimately will make the changes they need to make. Front row middle, Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Yeah, I have a fact too. Um, one, is, uh, <coughs> you're not the first black athletic director, but you're probably the most, you know, giving you the most influential, significant one. What does that mean to you? Um, and the 
other one is not as pleasant. Uh, <laughs> five years ago, when all the stuff happened with Urban and the Zach Smith stuff, yeah. uh, how much does that? Uh, how much do you think about that? How much a part of your legacy do you think that is? Any, any reflections on that period? Yeah. So. Um, I'll answer the first, the second one first. You know, there's moments in my history where they were disappointed. It gets back to Rob's question. You know, 2011 was hard. That was harder than you know the time with, that we dealt with with Urban. But that was hard, right? And I'm disappointed that we were there. Disappointed in the student athletes that had to bear the pain of that. Disappointed that Buckeye Nation had to bear the pain of that. Disappointed you guys had to cover that. Uh, so it was hard, uh, and so yeah, they're in my career, my legacy, not just here at Arizona State, and, um, uh, Iowa State, and Eastern Michigan. You know, there's been times when um, I wish I could have done something different. There's no question about it. And that that one you just raised, no question. What would you have done differently? Um, you know, I don't know. I, I really shouldn't. I don't want to talk about that. That's not important. Uh, but you know, you, any leader uh, who says that everything was smooth and they look back and they wouldn't have changed the decision they made, they, I'm uh, not so sure they're being 100% honest with you. Uh, but uh, some, some, some are perfect. I'm just not perfect. Um, so, um, you know, well, give me your first question again. I'm sorry. Oh yeah. So you know, it's it's. It's always been an honor, you know. I, uh, I decided this years ago. Um, you know, I was 29 as an athletic director, and you know, one of the few, and there was only two at that time. And um, uh, I decided that uh, you know I was just going to do my job and try <coughs> to do it excellently uh, and disregard the color of my skin. And, and that was hard because there were a lot of rooms that I walked into in the 80s, early 90s, where there were people in the room that didn't want me there. And I knew that. Fortunately, I was able to be embraced by the people who did want me there, the Cedric Dempsey's of the world, the Los Dodds, the God blessing Michael Cleary of the world, who embraced me right away. And, and there was those others that um, I knew that didn't want me there. Uh, but um, you know, I've always felt that it was an honor and a privilege to be the first. Uh, and I didn't see it as a burden, except that in the early years, uh, I knew I couldn't fail. Uh, because if I fell, I'd be the excuse. But back in the day, that's not true today in a lot of places. It still exists, but not as true today with the hiring authorities as it was then. Uh, because if I fell, it would have been See, they can't do it. So I'm proud of that. I'm proud that I've been blessed to have this career. Well, fourth row right, Pete Dankos on uh, three. Gene, uh, Greg St. was on the Paul Feinbaum show yesterday and spoke about where, where the college football playoff stands right now. Would you uh, like it to be reexamined with all the realignment movements in the last 10 days? And, and would you be open to an idea possibly where uh, – all 12 teams could be up for maybe like the, the top four spots in the playoff. Yeah, um, I haven't thought about that. And, um, you know, I have a, a tremendous respect for Greg. And I go back years serving on NCAA council committees, and I think he's outstanding. And so I was texting him this morning about this decision. And, um, you know, he's, he's, he's going to be in it a while. So I don't know. I'm not, I haven't been in those rooms. I haven't thought about that. Um, I like the 12 team playoff, uh, but they do have to figure out, you know, the, the new format considering the, the conferences, and they have to figure out the, the revenue share, all that. So I, I trust Greg, I trust Tony Petiti, so I, I'll leave it to them. Uh, second row left, Steve Telway again. Steve, what's up, brother? <laughs> 24/7 Sports. Congrats. <laughs> Remember interviewing you when you got the job. Yeah, back in the day, I didn't have gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> the before and after pictures of everybody who comes here are pretty stark. Um, you can talk freely. You're, you're, you're going to be out of this in a year or so. Just uh, in your mind, you know, USC and UCLA, you look at it and say, you're gaining the Los Angeles market, California. Mm -hmm. Oregon and Washington, to me, doesn't feel like Ohio State benefits monetarily a whole lot from that 
what was the end game? What is the end game in all these chess pieces moving around in your mind? Yeah, well, first, um, um, I have a lot of respect for Oregon and Washington. Uh, keep in mind, when we study UCLA and USC, we also study uh, Oregon and Washington. So our learning curve in this decision was not that hard. Uh, I know those athletic directors, Jen and Washington, and, and uh, Rob and Oregon, good friends and uh, really great colleagues. But, um, you know, they're AAU institutions, uh, strong academic institutions. They, they're in markets. When you look at the demographics of the Northwest, um, it's, it's a young population. It's a young population. So when Tony or gets to the point of renegotiating a new contract and we have streaming, that demographic might be more um, uh, amenable to that type of platform. Um, but um, you know, when you look at the, the new coaches AP poll, I think Oregon and Washington are ranked in the top 25, right? Uh, they have proven themselves as an institution that invest in their athletic programs. They're valuable uh, uh, institutions to bring into our league. So you got to think long, 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 long. Uh, if I was just thinking competitively, no, I don't want a man. I don't want to play him. Um, but that's not, you know, how you do business. So um, I just think they're great institutions. Uh, they're going to be. Uh, it's going to be exciting for our league. To, for Washington and Oregon to come in at the same time as USC and UCLA. It's going to be exciting for our fans uh, you know, when they go to Washington and go to Oregon. Um, you know, it's, they're cool places. So I think there's a lot of positive elements around it. Sure, there's some negatives, uh, but the, the positives outweigh that. You said uh, you didn't want to be part of a model where the athletes were employees or paid directly. Um, you guys turned a $20 million profit or whatever the exact number was. Some of that in the Tony game last year probably factored into that. Um, and with an increase in television money going forward, at least for your league, um, at some point, don't you feel like the athletes deserve some of that money that the schools are bringing in, aside from the collectors? Mm -hmm. Would this in some way streamline this entire process of what we all are being led to believe is a bidding war for high school athletes right now with NIL yeah. collectives. You can speak freely. You're leaving this model. I'm not <laughs> gone yet, though. I'm not gone yet. Okay. Tell, tell don't, 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 don't go too deep there. You're getting emotional. So get to the question. On. What's the question? Tell us what's going on. <laughs> Do you feel that there's any way you can justify not paying the players going yeah, forward? Yeah, you know, first of all, uh, I do not believe that student athletes should be employees. That's a whole new relationship. Now, to the heart of your question, we need to continue to look at ways where we provide monetary support to the student athlete. You know, people forget all the time about the investments we currently make. Okay, so, um, you know, you, as an athlete in football, you get room, board, books, and tuition. Remember, we got cost of attendance approved. That wasn't a part of the scholarship model. Remember, the Austin money, the 5,980, that's added to your scholarship. So should there be more money added to that, that, that line item? Sure, I'm fine with that. But I, I want to make sure it's tied, it's tethered to something educationally as opposed to a paycheck. That's not what I want. So I agree with your premise that student, we always have to look at ways to invest in student athletes. Now keep in mind that the other part of what we do, and you guys see that big circle of care out there when you walk out of this room, all that costs money. So every student athlete, um, unlike the rest of the students on our campus, every student athlete has at least nine people around them that they can go to for help, for help. Our sports science investment, I don't know if you get me going. The, the dollars that we invest to help Marvin Harrison be Marvin Harrison, from the time he was a puppy to now are significant, significant. Now, you don't count that money. The general public doesn't count that money because they don't see it. And I understand that. But to the premise of your question, yeah, I've always been. That's why I fought for cost of attendance. That's why I fought for parents getting stipends when they travel. So I always believe in that. So I, I don't disagree with your premise. I disagree with they should be employees. That's a whole new ball game when you take them to an employee level. 
Uh, front row middle, uh, Joey Kaufman. Columbus. Does that answer your question, yeah. Steve? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Steve, you, you look back on your time here, you point point about the financial funds and the schools that have come before. Let me look back on your comment. Where did that fit into the back of the year? Did you find it in 36? Yeah. Yeah, that's a problem. Uh, that's a great question. I, you know, appreciate that, Joey. Is you know, it's, it's hard to sustain a 36 foot model uh, in this world, uh, especially when you, you know, you need to, to make the investments that Steve talked about and, and make the investments in, in our facilities and in all those type of things. And our costs go up anywhere from five to six percent a year just naturally you know, because of travel and things of that nature. So, probably the fact that we've been able to sustain uh, 36 sports proud of our coaches for working within the expenditure guidelines that we provided them and uh, they've done a great job in that area our unit managers as well uh, so uh, it's hard and we will continue to, to fight that hopefully the next person will do that um, not sure you know that'd be their call but yeah really proud of that and, and when you look across the country it's been difficult to, to reduce sports so I don't see that as, as an option uh, for the future do you see that as Challenge for the, the next person to step into your shoes to manage all those sports and what advice? Yeah, just, you know, it's, it's a business decision, you know, they'll have to make. And uh, that is a challenge, you know, but when you got good people uh, like the coaches we have and the support staff we have, you can, you can figure it out. And, uh, you know, so um, I really don't know uh, what advice I would give them except well, be good at what you do. <laughs> Right next door, Tim May, let him enroll. Uh, I was going to ask you one thing, but I want to ask you How do I get one of those on three hats, man? Yeah, I've got plenty of them. <laughs> Some of them trucker hats, I'm not going to wear them. Uh, I want to ask you one, one thing, but I want to ask one thing, kind of following up on Steve things, uh, Steve's uh, question is, should there be some kind of bonus structure that was set up for athletes just like there are for coaches? If, in fact, you get into college football playoff, I mean, there's a possibility of playing four straight, four games in that thing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the wear and tear there is obvious to anybody, you know, compared to the regular student athlete who doesn't get into that. Should, should they share some of the bonus situation that's coming from the college football playoff? Yeah, I don't know what model. Um, I, I've always believed that if there's a way that you can find uh, an opportunity to provide additional resources to student athletes, you should do that. And I'm, there's a million ideas like yours on yeah. how to do that. So I don't, I don't know if that's the the right model, but. Uh, that one would take work. You just don't throw out an idea and say that's the right one. It takes work to evaluate the, the effects of that. You know, what's the taxes on a student athlete? How does what does that mean to them? So there's just you know, getting back to Steve's question, there's a way to do it where you know you can avoid a lot of those issues. But you know, I, I don't know what those models, what 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 are what my colleagues would embrace nationally as a model. Yeah. And. Uh at China, Washington State, Martin Germain at UCLA, Dinah State, Atlanta, Utah, what, Southern Utah, what? No, Utah State. Yeah, Utah State, yeah. I get those mixed up. Uh, you have brought forward diverse people into athletic administration during your time and stuff. How proud are you of that? And, and was that a focus that you, that, of, of your regime that you wanted to further other people's dreams? Yeah, I mean, I mean that, I know it sounds kind of savvy, but it, it is happening. No, that's true, Tim. I mean, I was blessed to, to, to have the opportunity to have, you know, those three and you know, Heather like at Pitt, you know, Ben Jay. I mean, we had a staff that was very diverse and, and we continue to do that. But and that's part of the, um, the, the effort. Uh, and so it kind of ties back a little bit to Bill's question, you know, back in the day, um, you know, there, there, there wasn't a pipeline. You know, of African Americans, and so um, you know, we we created these uh, opportunities and these seminars. I actually, hosted one year years ago, uh, and uh, uh, just trying to create opportunities for young people to get into the pipeline. And uh, so, those that you mentioned, um, you know, we we developed and, and got them out there. And, and I wasn't the only one. You know, Kevin White did the same thing when when he was at uh, Duke and. Uh, so there was a there was a concerted effort to uh, to improve the diversity of our industry by a, a few of my colleagues. Yeah, and one last quick, or do you, do you feel like you know, step away into this school year? But do you feel like college athletics are in a good place, or is this uh, 
Like I was talking about one guy, he said, you know, like college football has never been better on the field right. and more chaotic off. I yeah, mean, you know, you, 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 it kind of ties to so many other questions. <clears throat> college, college athletics is in a great place. It's in a great place. You, you have to have a perspective. And so um, the student athletes that we serve, that's where you got to go. Forget about all the other stuff that's happening. Is the student athlete having a great experience? You know, is that, are their talents and their gifts of being optimized for them? Not just the program, but for them. Are, are, are we making the investments necessary so that they can be the best that they can be and chase their dreams? And I don't know what it is everywhere else, but I can tell you here, I just, I, I, you know, our student athletes are off the chain. Our volleyball team, our women's basketball team, our men's team, I can just go straight down the list. And those athletes are having a quality educational experience. So all the other stuff is minutia to me. At the end of the day, that's what I care about. You know, the graduation the ceremony that, you know, but to have a Justin Fields a year ago, come back from Chicago, multi-million and walk. Come on. So I think what we have to do as a society is keep that in our focus. If a school's not doing that, then we need to call them out. All the other stuff is just what you do. It's business. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right behind it, Bill Landis. Okay. <laughs> There's no dots in there, Bill, or what? Just to be clear on something, should the position come into existence in the near future, would you like to be the commissioner about football? Hell no. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Given all the change of football and its importance, like top down for any athletic department that plays at the level that you all play it, um, how important is the relationship with the head football coach and uh, your successor, the, 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 the process of finding your successor, like the balance between making sure Ryan is compatible and like minded about the future of football with that person, but also not like, choosing his own boss? Yeah, that's. Uh... That, that is critical. That is um, you know, most important. You know, so Ryan and I are aligned. Like, it's never been. I don't know. We got an emotional tie because we we share a lot of beliefs, and you know, he's just a, a good human being. So um, because of our football background, I can talk to him about. Who's that left tackle? Who's that right tackle? You know where we are with the quarterback. You know, what's the issues here? What's the issues there? So we have great conversations, and but also alignment with you know the, the industry, all the issues that we talked about, getting his feedback, and such an easy conversation because um, he's smart. Uh, so yes, the, the answer to your question is that alignment has to exist. You can't have conflict there. Um, and I look across the country, and, and I see. You know, you can all of you can see. Oh, they're they're not aligned. Uh, so yeah, that's critical. Um, you know, I, you know he's you know I'm gonna miss him when it's all said and done. Uh, he, he's he's a real deal. Got time for a couple more. Uh, fourth row left, Adam Jardy, Columbus Dispatch. Hey Adam, congratulations. Thank you, buddy. Um, what in your mind does a conference season look like for an 18 team conference? If you're talking about a sport like college basketball, where you already played 20 games, how does the math? Yeah, I don't know. You know, I'm, that's crazy. Adam, I'm, we haven't had our call yet on scheduling. Uh, we talked about it Monday. We had a call, and so that's going to be set up for us over the next couple of weeks to begin those conversations. So I'm not really sure. You know, we, we have a scheduler in the league that, that will give us recommendations and advice, and uh, they know our principles. You know, so uh, that's I just don't know at this point. I'm sorry. When, when you start looking at going to the West Coast, do you think it makes sense? Yeah, yeah, that's always already been talked about as something we need to consider. So not just for basketball, I know, but for all our sports. You know, if our women's soccer team is going out to play uh, UCLA, then they should have a day in between and play USC. So those scenarios, uh, our senior women administrators have done a phenomenal job setting up our framework for that. But 
excuse me, now with Oregon and Washington coming in, we kind of have to reevaluate and see if those, those that framework still works. Where do other sports other than football fit into the conversation about expanding the conference? Yeah, so um, each sport is different. You know, what we can do is look at, you know, all of them holistically. You know, tennis is different than volleyball and swimming is different than track, so you have to kind of look at them that way. And so our senior women administrators have done a great job of looking at each individual sport, their nuances, their seasons, uh, their uh, ability uh, to have postseason competition, you know, in the conference and nationally. So they've created a framework uh, that still they're working on, uh, and they'll continue to work on now at Oregon and Washington's end. So all of them uh, have s the similar issues uh, as basketball, but now we just got to kind of dig in deeper. That makes sense. And right behind Adam, Joe Nugent, WCMH. Hey, Joe. Hey, how's it going? All right. Uh, on the personal side, I'm curious when the calendar hits July next year, is there anything you're looking forward to finally do? Yeah, you know, um, um, that first week, I think we're going to, with our family to Colorado somewhere. So, um, you know, she was already figured that out. And uh, But yeah, you know, I'm, you know, my, my plan is, is to, to, to move on. Uh, get out of the way and let the new leader lead and not be in her or his hair. So that's the deal. But yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to July. And uh, I may come back to one of your press conferences just to bug you guys. And, uh, <laughs> maybe tell me, give me a hat and I can sit in the back and ask questions or something like that. Yeah. Actually, I do have one more question. Uh, fifth row middle, Braden Moles, Buckeye Sports Bulletin. Gene, over the next uh, what, months for you, balancing wanting to leave you know, a positive landscape for the next AD and still having a job for you to do. How do you balance kind of, or I guess, how do you envision your kind of initiatives and focuses over these next 11 months? Yeah, great question. I uh, I intend to sit down with my, my team and, and have a conversation about, okay, what what should I uh, make sure I focus on this year? Uh, you know, there's a lot of things to do, but uh, in my short time, I'll take their advice. Um, you know, what, 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 do you, what do you guys think I should focus on? So I don't make those decisions on my, by myself. So haven't done that yet, but, uh, you know, at some point I'll sit with them and, and we'll brainstorm and, uh, you know, I'm sure fundraising will be in there because, you know, that's a large part of the job. But, um, you know, I'll just have to talk to them and get their feedback and then I'll focus based upon what they say. Gene, thank you very, very uh, much. Thank you, all of you. Thank you. Appreciate it, Jerry. Uh, a couple of you guys I know have texted me. They wanted to ask Gene a you know, one on one question. Well, Gene's been gracious uh, enough to give us a little bit more time. So if you view play pop up, you can yep. take him right outside if you want. And uh, uh, we'll just stay in here and work. We'll have Coach Day in here probably in a, uh, might be an hour and 15, 20 minutes. But hang in here and, and work. And, and again, a couple of you guys wanted, wanted an additional question or two. So, Gene, we'll, uh, we'll work to make that happen.